Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another Let's Read About the Presence. Today, we uh, tonight, we are going to do Mr. Millard Fillmore. Millard Fillmore. Born January 7th, 1800. In Lock Township, Cayuga County, New York. Died March 8th, 1874. In Buffalo, New York. He was nicknamed the American Louise Philippe. He was a Unitarian. That's questionable faith, a questionable religion there. Uh, no, no higher education. He was a lawyer during his life, served in the Civil War. He served as major in the Union Continental's Home Guard of Buffalo. His father was Nathaniel Fillmore. Mother was Phoebe Millard Fillmore. First wife, Abigail Powers Fillmore, wed in 1826. Uh, second wife was Carolyn Carmichael Kintosh Fillmore, married in 1858. Children included Millard Powers Fillmore, Mary Abigail Fillmore. No children from the second wife. Political life, New York Assemblyman, U.S. Representative, to for th all, five years, but not in a row. Uh, New York State Controller, Comptroller, for a year or six months, and Vice President for six months or less. He had one term, which lasted for three years. Uh, three years. It's about three. It's supposed to be four. But he was a Whig. Reason for leaving office, lost party's nomination, no vice president. And no election. Took office upon death of President Zachary Taylor. Cabinet for Mr. Fillmore was Daniel Webster as Secretary of State, with, along with Edward Everett. Secretary of the Treasury, Thomas Corwin. Secretary of War, Charles Conrad. Attorney General John J. Crittenden, Secretary of the Navy William Graham, and John P. Kennedy. Ooh, Kennedy, Kennedy. Uh, Postmaster General was Nathan K. Hall and Samuel D. Hubbard. Secretary of the Interior Thomas M. D. McKinnon and Alexander H. H. Stewart. Double H. Stewart. Did we know Fillmore refused an honorary doctorate of law degree from Oxford University because he felt he had neither literary nor scientific attainment? He had one Supreme Court appointment, and that was Mr. Benjamin R. Curtis in 1851. State of the Union for Mr. Fillmore. Population of the U.S. was 23,191,876. National debts in 1853, 59,803,118. Same presidential salary. California is admitted to the Union on September 9, 1850. Oh, 1850. I thought it was 1853. Okay, so 1850. Okay, September 9th, 1850. 31 states. The Free Soil read about that one. A short-lived political party formed by a variety of groups, including Democrats, barn burners, they call them, anti-slavery Whigs, and members of the former Libertary Liberty Party. The Free Soil Party opposed extending slavery into the Me Mexican Session territories and wanted a Homestead Act passed. Homestead Act passed. Free soldiers nominated Martin Van Buren as their presidential candidate in 1848. Though defeated in the election, they split enough votes for the Democrats to allow Zachary Taylor and the Whigs to win. Underground Railroad, we know about this. The Underground, Underground Railroad was a system of stations and station masters providing safe stops for fugitive, fugitive slaves escaping the South. 
It is believed to have begun late in the 18th century with the aid of Quakers. The network expanded, expanded, and by 1850, 1860s, excuse me, more than 100,000 people had escaped to freedom. And Harriet Tubman was a big instrument in that. If you know the story about Harriet Tubman. Fugitive Slave Law of 1850. <clears throat> the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 angered Northern residents by forcing them to help the authorities recover runaway slaves. Anyone aided, anyone who aided uh, a fugitive slave could be sentenced to six months in jail and with a $1,000 fine. With its passage, runaway slaves now had to escape to Canada to be truly free, and so thousands trekked farther north. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Let's read about that. After visiting Kentucky and living several years across the Ohio River in Cincinnati, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom, Tom's Cabin, which depicted the horrors of slavery and the story of a slave's attempt to escape from her wicked master. The book immediately became a bestseller, though reviled by, su by Southerners who denounced it as slanderous. This seminal novel is credited with inspiring countless Americans to join the abolitionist movement, including Frederick Douglass, I'm sure. Abigail Fillmore established the first permanent White House library. Nice. Nice, nice. And that is it for Miller Fillmore. One more, and we'll get to, to this next person in the next video.